Oh, oh, that's disrespectful. Oh my, I thought I had it a little low and I was like, this is going to sound disrespectful, but you're even more. What is up football fans, but most importantly, UFL fans, welcome to episode six of Polar Opposites, the best UFL show out there on the internet, best produced, best hosted, best guys on it. It looks the best. It sounds the best. Guys, there's nothing better. I can promise you that. I've checked twice. All right. But before we get into the show, Kenny, roll the music. guys we got a great episode for you today uh we're not debating super hard we're not going to get at each other's necks we thought we would take a little bit of a break we we just were so happy seeing training camp in these new uniforms that we thought we'd we'd be a little bit nicer to each other today uh so i guess Webb, you want to just get into it well first of all i'm going to tip my hat to you you went three and oh last week so i just want i just want to tip my hat to you almost forgot yeah. almost forgot the champ is here. I need just like what uh there's a lot of WWE fans in spring football, right? I need like the bam 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 just throw you one of these. You're killing me, man. You're killing me. You're killing me. <laughs> oh, I love it. But another thing is we, we couldn't debate best offensive line room. It's not great YouTube, right? Like people aren't it's gonna not. tune into that. So yeah. We're getting into the season. We're getting ready for the season. So this is kind of like our season preview light episode. So I'm excited yes. for it. Um, which is upsetting. You know, offensive line is arguably the most important, second most important position in spring football besides quarterback. Because quarterback play 100% dictates how the league looks. And offensive line play directly correlates and affects the quarterback play. So it's a big thing that we could talk about. And people just apparently don't want to hear it. That's fine. Big guys, you know we love you, man. All right, but KB, what is our first topic of the day? First topic of the day, gentlemen, is let's talk about your uh, over-under predictions, win-loss predictions uh, for uh, for the start of the season. All right, all right. So what we're going to do for this topic is we're going to go through uh, Webb is going to handle the XFL teams because he has converted to the other side and I am going to go over the USFL teams. So I'll name a USFL team, get a little or an XFL team, give a little synopsis. And then I will say a, the amount of wins. So I'll say like, do you think this team will get more than five wins? You know, 500 and Webb will then tell me if I am too high or too low. Everybody that sound good. Yeah. We're, we're just about right. Things. You can't, you or can't do just right. about right. Or you're like, oh, yeah, you're actually totally right. That's my number. Okay, so I'll go first. Uh, so let's start with, you know what? I'm going to start with the Brahmas. The Brahmas, they have quarterbacks that are still up in the air. They're up for dispute. Some people say Garber. Some people say Dormady, like myself. Their defense looks to be a complete 180 this year, as it is basically the roughnecks of last year. They have some fantastic receivers. They have Kirkland, who was wild last year on the roughnecks. They have... Um, Latimer, they look like a completely different team. But I'm going to say the line sits at three. They are an unproven team. The line sits at three. Am I too high or too low? Well, you're too low. Uh, Brahma Bullpen is going to kill you when he watches this episode. I just want to let you know. So get ready for They had three deal. last year. They had three last year, and they're a whole new squad. I get it. They're the Ruffmas, whatever, but it's still a new squad. So Kenny, can you bring up the Brahma schedule for us real quick? Because I, I think it's going to be a season of ups and downs. I think it's going to be so looking at their, uh, looking at their schedule, I, I have them at four and six. Um, just full So not that low. I mean, I was one off. Brahma bullpen, Josh and Dustin are still going to hate you for that. That's, but, that's but, so but, three, but three and seven is like terrible. Yeah, it's like disrespectful. disrespectful. It's disrespectful. Well, four and six, eh, when, when you figure out where the playoff numbers are, maybe you're game out, right? Three and seven, like yeah. you were done at week nine, right? <laughs> the last week you were just out there for for respect. Yeah, I guess. yeah, the toilet bowl. Yeah, see, 
Do but it. We're going to draft looking first. At, looking at their schedule, I have them losing the first four games, honestly. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Oh, oh, dude, three of those are home. You think you yeah, but three in a row. And three I, 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 here's here's my whole thing. I think I think DC is the deepest team. Um, I know that I I cover them. I I think they're the deepest roster. I think they're most prepared for the uh, we started the season, opener. especially yeah. This, okay. And then going to Memphis, I think Memphis, Memphis is going to be a tough team to play. Um, we'll get to their prediction, my prediction for them, or your prediction. I think Memphis is going to be a tough game. And then you're going to St. Louis, who is one of the better teams. And you'll find out my new affinity for the Michigan Panthers. So right there, that four games right there. Wow. Your own four. Then I okay. then I have them coming back, winning one, beating Arlington, losing okay. D.C. again, and okay. then winning three of the last four, beating your Houston uh, Roughnecks, too. Saw that coming. Only losing to uh, Birmingham at the end. But you think I, that I they just will think they're going to uh, beat the no. St. Louis Battlehawks in week 10. Yes, I do. I do. Explain that one. Explain that one for a second. Well, because, I, Kenny, because just, Kenny just laughed out loud in our I, he, he did. He did. But he, here's, here's – you have to see my whole prediction before I could say that. Okay. But my thinking is that St. Louis is getting ready for the playoffs at that time. Okay. They won't, ha- they won't have anything. So Wade Phillips is going to coach his team. You know he is. His team's not going to give in. They're going to get better as the year goes on, and that will give them that fourth win. So – your three win prediction, I could definitely see it because if St. Louis uh, yeah. got something to play for, I'm probably picking St. Louis. But when I was going through my predictions, St. Louis had nothing to play for in week 10. So I gave it to the Brahmas and helped them get up to four and six. So Josh is going to kill me over there at the uh, Brahma bullpen and Dustin, right? Producer Dustin, because I, th- I think they're out of the playoffs going into week nine, week 10. Huh. That's brutal. Uh, but, but my I, line I, I like this. So. Yeah, I, I like Garbers. You like Dormady. Um, I think the quarterback, A.J. Smith, is going to get – it seems like he's running the show down there. It seems like they're a lot more offensive. Lot yes. Yeah, it, it, they're a lot more offensive than a traditional Wade Phillips team, in my opinion, while their defense is also not bringing back a ton, but they're bringing back some. The offensive line, Latimer. Latimer is one of the best, right? I, I came up with a stat, right? The security blanket stat, and Akers is number two. A- Acres number two and Latimer is number three out of all tight end and slots from last year that are returning. So like that tells me they have weapons. The quarterback, I, I think they have the biggest quarterback question mark in the league. And then they're not my, I I'll tell you mine when it comes up, but they're not okay. mine. Um, but, so, I think that we could see Dormady and Garbers. And I agree with what you're saying. I think that Smith really is in the driver's seat when it comes to the offense. But I think, yes, they didn't bring a lot back, but they did bring a lot of roughnecks for their defense. And I think that Wade Phillips really mostly only cares about the roughnecks, uh, yeah. not the roughnecks, the defense. And I think that, yeah, Smith is in the driver's seat and who kind of has the bigger arms, like who's willing to sling it downfield like Brandon Silvers did last year. And I think that might be Dormady, genuinely. Uh, he just seems a little less fearless, fear, a little more fearless. There you go. But do you want to just roll through all four XFL or do you want to go back and forth? It'll be my team. My turn. Uh, I want to okay. hear your prediction on the Birmingham Stallions. You know, I'm trying to get the viewers to watch more than four minutes. Uh, Stallions, the most popular team, the two-time USFL champs. They're not the UFL champs. Um, led by Zach Potter, great GM. They've got a great roster. Um, a battle at the quarterback position. Mm-hmm. What's your take? My over and under, and this might be a layup for you, is seven. I was about to say, you're about to say my number. I have seven and three. Uh, I did it earlier. I went through each week and I have them at seven and three. Uh, I'm a little hurt that we have to go through each game that I think that they're going to win because it's going to hurt my streak. Okay. 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 Do it anyway. No, no, I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to do it. Yeah. That's going to hurt my streak. (laughs) So here we go. So, uh, no, I'll say the wins week one. I think that they are going to beat the Arlington renegades. I think they might have, Upwards of six sacks in that one game. Uh, I genuinely think that. From what I heard in, of a joint practice, I think the Renegades are a decent team. But I think one thing that they are lacking in a little bit is I don't think they're going to protect the quarterback that well. And they don't have a particular, particularly mobile QB1 at this time. At some point, could Lindsey Scott start? Sure. And he can you know maneuver out of the pocket and, and work a little better. But I have them. Nice, Kenny. I love that. But I have them winning week one. Week two. I, here, I have them winning the first three weeks. 
I genuinely do. And I was going to have them in an L week three, but that's their first home game. And I just think that Birmingham's really going to show out. I think they win week three. I think week four, it's a close game, but they lose to the DC defenders in week five. I think, uh, you know, it's an away game, but they get us early, and I, I I have them as a W on the Houston Roughnecks. Now it's a hopeful a hopeful L, but I have them as a win. So they're winning one, two, three. They're winning week five. Then I have them going and losing two straight. I think after they beat the St. Louis or not the St. Louis after they beat the Memphis Showboats. No, no, no. Move that over. Move that over, Kenny. They lose week four. They win week five. There you go. Uh, I think that week six, the showboats are going to have their number. They're going to come back with a vengeance and it's going to be in Memphis and Memphis. I, you know, I went to game one last year. They really can be loud and rowdy and I don't know. Memphis as a whole just rocks you to your core a little bit. So I think that they will lose that game. Then I think they lose to the St. Louis battle Hawks because I think at that point they'll have hopefully Jacor Pearson back. We heard today he's on IR. Uh, I think that they could, like really lose to the battle Hawks. I think the battle Hawks can rock them. Like that'll be their game that kind of wakes them up. You know, that was about the time where they got into a slump last season. I think week eight, they go in and they win. Uh, I think they, they beat my roughnecks two in a row. And I don't necessarily think that that knocks us out of the playoffs. That's not what I'm saying, but for now, until we are proven and we prove that we have a QB one, yeah, I got to give it that defense is is stout. Then I have them winning the last two games. Yeah, so they win three, then they lose, win, lose, lose, and then win out. I think that they lose to Memphis in a close one. I think they lose pretty bad to St. Louis, and then I think that rocks their Casbah and it gets them where they need to be to move on into the playoffs at a seven win team, and they win win the last three. What do you think, Webb? Uh, I have them. A uh, very streaky season. I have them two dubs right at the beginning, then a three-game losing streak. I think they lose to Memphis. I think they lose to D.C., and I think they lose to you guys at Houston. Because if there's any if there's any tradition, it's, it's Houston Birmingham's Birmingham. going to lose. Uh, yeah, yeah. Birmingham is going to lose to Houston at least one time. At least one time. And, and then the whole second half of the season, I have them winning out. I, I have them really? in ext- a, a re- their last five games. They're on a roll going to the playoffs, and I think they're, oh. they're forced to. But I think the – those first five weeks, they're going to be struggling with the quarterback until they decide on a quarterback. I don't think they're fully. I know Macarell is probably the favorite. I, I don't think they're fully convinced that Macarell is going to start right off a week at week one. I think That's you're going to see a split kind of. So um, I think Corral's the consensus QB one going into week one. And, and, I, he, and he might. He, he definitely might be. And he, he's super talented. I, that That's not the question. It just, I think. Skip is loyal too, at to a certain degree. Ah, to and, a fault, dude. Yeah, and then Co- Cozart still, uh, not Cozart. Uh, Morton is Morton. still there. Yeah, and and then they have Adrian Martinez, and like more than likely he's gonna have to cut one of his guys. And until he cuts Morton or Smith, like he's yeah. he he favors his guys that have been there, and and they've won. So why not? But it works. Um, I mean, seven. We both get to seven, so it doesn't make a difference. Yeah. Um, that's wow <laughs> to, to go win, win, and then lose until you don't lose again is wild and get seven wins. I like it. All right. Well, let's move on. You had me intrigued. You had my attention, but now you have, no, you had my curiosity, but now you have my attention because you brought up that the Brahmas were going to beat the St. Louis battle Hawks going into week 10. So now I want to know the battle Hawks, they get AJ McCarron back. We know that your Pearson is going to miss at least a few games this season on IR, but they have still, I would say still a top two or three wide receiver room after that. You know, they have a decent offensive line. Their defense is not the best in the league, but it's definitely good enough with the offense that they're hoping to put up those kind of numbers. Their win loss line. I have it at six. What do you say? Man, man you're cheating off my sheet, man. Are I you serious? I have them at six and four, and they're six and three going to the final in the final week. And they could be battling and they could go up to seven and three. So I want to be surprised if they're higher than six. Um, okay. I put them at six because they have nothing to play for when you play on my scenario. But I have them starting off four and oh, man. I have them being at the top of the power rankings middle of the season. I have them rolling right through those first four teams. 
I really do. I I, th- I think even without Pearson, I think their wide receiver room is deep. I think I love Peta. I you know I love yeah. defense. I think a wide receiver room isn't going to make or break. I think quarterback dictates much more. You're right. Yeah, and McCarron, McCarron's, McCarron's a vet here. And yeah. then, then I see them struggling in the middle part of the season. I have them losing to D.C. I have them losing to Houston, and I have them losing to Birmingham. Then they Lose pick up two wins. And, and then they pick up two wins. I'm sorry. I have them beating D.C. that second time right there. Okay, so each of us have put some L's over our teams. You know yeah. that means that we're we're being for real here. We're yeah, being for I, real for real. I, I ran through all, and the only reason why they lose week ten is because they have nothing to play for. So they they beat Arlington because we'll get to Arlington and my thoughts on Arlington. But I I like this team. I think Beck runs a great program over there. I really do. Um, as much as they're the rivals of DC, um, Butler Shepherd. Like, yes, they'll miss Pearson, but he'll be healthy for the playoffs, hopefully, right? Yeah. And I'm telling you, they're going to the playoffs. Um, they're secondary with DeLuca. I, I just I just like this team. I, I really do. And I, I think uh, Beck, Wayne Gallman, come on, that's another Clemson guy, right? I Like, you know my uh, my affinity for Clemson guys. They're special teams. They were the great, the best special teams bunch out of the XFL side last year. Um, yeah, I def- the special and- player of the year. I, I didn't even realize like how many. So I got one, two, no, one, two, yes, three. I, I actually have them going three and two at home in front of the big crowd. I, I have them going three and two on the road and away. So um, very even. I but I when you get to the other teams, you understand why. Uh, I think they're one of the top three teams in the league, honestly. So I could see it. Yeah, so. I can see it happening. Okay, now who is the USFL team that you want to hit me with? Go the Memphis Showboats. You talked about Memphis being a rowdy uh, place. Uh, D. Filippo takes over there from Todd Haley. They kind of had an up and down season where, like, at points they looked like they were world beaters. Right at the beginning of the season, their defense was playing lights out, and then they kind of fell apart. And they fell apart in the beginning of the season. So, can D. Filippo right the sh- ship with thick thighs and the chef? Okay, what's your line? My line is four. Oh, your line is four? I got it at six. You can see it there. Oh, boy. Right, they are that's 64. the biggest difference so far. Oh, man. This is going to get so messy because I was not paying, like, a ton of attention, and I might overlap and not be right. But uh, here, let me see the – yeah, okay. So week one, I have them winning against us just because I think they'll be the most week one – right. I think D.C. – uh, St. Louis and the Showboats will be the three most ready week one. You know, I could just see it. So I think they win two. You know, they take out the two Texas teams, which hurts, but that's okay. Then I think they lose two because I think the Stallions will be at a mid to full gallop. And I think the uh, Battle Hawks, when they're going in and they're playing in the Dome uh, over in the America Center, I think that they lose that. Then I think they win two. I think, like I said, when I was back on the Birmingham Stallion, so I'm still pretty right here that I haven't gotten too crazy. Uh, I think they beat the Panthers because the Panthers are my weakest team in the USFL right now. I think they win the second game against the Stallions because I think it'll be hard to beat this team twice. Then I think they win the next two games and then they lose out. So I think that they will uh, win two away games, which is crazy. But then if I learned anything from them last year, like the showboats just couldn't finish. And so I think when they hit week nine, they're going to hit the defenders and the defenders are going to hit them back really, really hard. And then I think after that, they probably won't really have anything to play for. And I think hopefully the Roughnecks will be in playoff contention. Uh, So hopefully that's just a hangover game from the big loss that they take from D.C. So here's what I have. And I have them at six and four. What do you think? You think four. What do you think I'm wrong about? So week one, I have them losing. That's dope. And then I have win-win. So I have them beating Birmingham. See, I think they I think they have to beat Birmingham the second time. I think they really have then, to get that chip. Like those masks need to be full wins, you know? My, my whole thing is by the, really the time you hit Birmingham in the second half, yeah. By the time you uh, hit Birmingham in the second half, it's going to be tough to beat Birmingham. I just think they're going to get on a roll. I think they'll figure it out. So I think they're going to yeah, get that's... hurt. 
<laughs> they, they, they did last year, and they ended up winning it all anyway. Uh, then they three, so two games in a row they beat San Antonio and Birmingham, and then I have them losing to St. Louis, losing to Michigan, and then losing to Birmingham, winning, and then losing the next two, and then beating you guys, and but, that is the game of the year. Oh. Or, for to decide who goes to the playoffs and who doesn't, you think and I have, that, I have, I have the, I have them winning that last game. Dude, so if that they, happens, well, I have to go back to Memphis. I don't want to go to Memphis. Well, I don't like that? Memphis. I, I genuinely no. did not enjoy being there. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna. This is a spoiler alert. They ruin your season on that last week. That You're is where bastard. it is. That is That's where it is. Sucks. Dang. Right. Okay. Well, dang. Whatever, dude. I don't care about you. You're a jerk. Okay, so Wait, so you had six wins there, right? I just want to keep track of who we had six. Who we we're like different. I think things. mine are pretty, pretty straight on. I don't even think I did win. No, I did. Okay. Oh, that's yeah. so confusing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think. Who did you? Ha- how many did you have for St. Louis? Seven, right? Yes. All right, I put six. So, put, all right, what, what's the next team you want to oh, talk for about? For St. Louis, Louis, we had we had the same. I think I said six. I said six. Okay, okay. I've also, for the XFL, I'm making it up as I say them. So, uh, <laughs> like, I, I didn't actually go through and do them the way that I did the USFL records. Uh, but now we have the Arlington Renegades because I figure we're kind of moving towards the fact that we're going to do our teams last, and that's fine. Love it. The Arlington Renegades, this is the team you told me pre-show you don't know the most about, right? It's the team that is the biggest question mark because they were bad last season, but then they, you know, got hot and they won the championship. Like, you just don't know. Then you're hearing one thing from one person and one thing from another person on the joint practice they did with the Roughnecks. So, like, were they good? Were they bad? Who knows? I want to know, do you think they will win more than four games? No, I have them at two and eight. I have them as the worst. I have them as the worst record Holy in crap. the UFL. Holy and crap! The From crazy first thing to is, worst, dude. Well, it's not, it, it, here's the thing, though. They went four and six last year, right? They went four and six. So, so the, it's really only a two game. It's not like if Birmingham went two and eight. Yeah, it's just a or DC. Um, they just. I think the competition got better. I don't think they got better. I I love Sal Canella. Sal Canella is one of my favorite players in the entire league. Um, being a yeah. tight end. Uh, Luis Perez, but it seems like there's always a question mark there. Like, is he going to finish out? I'm not a big Lindsey Scott fan. I know a lot of people in the community are, but I just, I just don't see it. I don't think his he's mobile mechanics, enough. Mechanics, dude. His mechanics are so bad for me. I think their That's offensive line is all right. Morgan Ellison is a great back with uh, Devon Smith, Mr. Pizza, right? Um, I, I, I just feel. That there's got to be a team that's got to finish at the bottom. And I think this roster is that team. Yeah. And I just think they'll be two and two after the first four weeks. I have them beating DC. All right, in week three, I I have oh. them, I have them beating DC, and I have them have beating Houston. Spaghetti, and Dang, I have them dude. beating you. <laughs> but so Dang. like I'm being fair, I'm being fair here. I have them you're losing all the rest. Trash. All right? <laughs> I I have them losing all the rest. I guess you could say that game kills your season too. But I I just. There's nothing that excites me here. Like it, it just. I know they're the defending champs, but they got hot at the right time. They faced the right team at the right time, um, in my opinion, on the XFL side. And if they get the four wins, would I be surprised? No, but at the same time, there's got to be a team that's terrible, and I just chose them. So I have them losing from week four all the way on. So they have literally, the long lose streak. Yeah, literally, they so they would be like mid pack on the power rankings, on our power rankings, the only power rankings that matter, guys. Yeah. If you're being completely straight, we're the only ones who take into account other people in the community. We're not trying to hoard votes and stuff. We're the only power rankings that actually matter. Okay, so midseason, the power rankings, they will probably be mid-ranking. And their fans, yeah. you know, James Baker, who's a very loyal fan, and I appreciate that about him because I know what that's like. I was a Gamblers fan. Uh, he's going to be like, no, we're going, you know, First place, we're going to win the championship. And then you just have them being a sinking ship for the last, like they, they were, they had a couple good, what, what is a renegade? It's kind of like a bandit. Like yeah. they had a couple good robberies and then they're going to prison for life. Like that's what they, yeah, they got caught. Business. They got caught. Yeah. They get caught. Bonnie and Clyde took a bullet to the head. Like, and, you know what the crazy wild. thing is? So they're two and two at that point. 
and the Brahmas are 0-4, and the, I, yeah. I think the – like, I didn't even think about it. No. No. <laughs> no, I have – the Brahmas beating them in week five, right? That's the Brahmas' first win in the whole season. They're gonna and the Brahmas end up get having more victories. It takes them five weeks to get one win, and they end up having more victories. So I, I just wild, think, dude. yeah, I just You're going hard on them, and that's pretty crazy. And and you put it at what you said four. Yes, my line was four wins, and I really thought you might say f- I thought you were going to say four. I thought I was going to go three for three hitting you, uh, and you surprised me on that one. That was pretty wild. That was pretty wild. Also, I well, want to say if we're going to do a poll this week, yeah. We can really only do a poll on this because then we're going to talk about the uniforms, right? And so we can really only do a poll. So do we say like, okay, these are Webb's predictions for the XFL and these are Ace's predictions for the USFL and say, who do you think is closer? Is that really what you say? Like, who do you think is going to be more right? Or do we just not do a poll this week and we just, you know, we're just shake hands and be like, GG's. (laughs) We'll we'll figure it out. I'm not 100% sure. Um, like, Like I said at the beginning of the show, it's tough to argue QBs all the time. We can argue like this and still be opposite. Oh, so. <sighs> QBs, you just beat into the ground, especially when we haven't even had a game where we don't even know who's going to start. Who knows? Maybe Lindsey Scott starts and his short arm throws are going to actually be what they do. <laughs> I don't know. I think he's a tremendous athlete. I genuinely, his picture of him doing pull-ups looks like he's freaking Ben Affleck in Batman for Superman, but his mechanics just aren't there. I don't think anybody has really taken the time to fix what he does wrong in a throw. And a lot of the throws that he made in college just will not go. They won't pass in professional football. So that's just my problem with him. But moving on, I assume. Michigan Panthers. There you go. Okay. What's your Mike reason? Nolan's team. Yeah. Mike Nolan's team comes back. EJ Perry, um, Danny Etling and Davis cheek. I think that's a competitive quarterback room. I think it's an underrated quarterback room. I think that's I'm gonna the set some, I, I, it could be, I, I don't know. I think I think it's not as big as question mark as two other teams have a quarterback. So I don't think it's the biggest question mark. But my bar is five and five. I put them at five and five. Higher or lower? I'll be straight with you, dude. I have them at two wins. <laughs> someone, someone has to. Someone has to be uh, like you know what I mean. Someone has to be a terrible record. I feel like I'm. I sound like I'm laughing like a psychopath because Kenny just laughed so hard in our ears when I said that. But yeah, I have them. Like I was gonna say three and seven, but then I realized going through my other records that if I want to make sure that I'm keeping things straight, they they only win two. Uh, so I'll tell you the two wins. They're gonna win in week four against the Brahmas because the Brahmas are also going to have a pretty bad record. And they're going to win in week six against the Renegades when you have them going on that second half tear of L's. So, you know, the L that stands for Lindsey Scott. But I just, I have them winning too. And the other ones, I think they will be in a lot of games. I think that their defense with Mike Nolan leading their their defense, he's a great mind. I think that they're going to be competitive a lot. You know, even though they didn't win a lot of games the past two seasons, they were in almost every single game other than a game against the stars in season one. And in season two, uh, they got absolutely blown out by what the stallions, maybe stallions are the showboats. One of them just blew them out. And I think they're always going to be competitive, but I really could only see them like actually winning those two games. What do you think? I have them going five and five. Um, I have them. I have them losing the first two. Winning four and then backing in the playoffs because your team and we'll get there falls apart. And that that's what it is. And I, I have them beating Memphis twice. That, that's the biggest thing. And that's what's going to carry them, really. I think they beat Memphis twice. I think they line up perfectly with Memphis. I love their defense. It's got a it's got a little Mauler theme to it, really. A flair. Yeah, with Gibson and Torton back there. And then you got Ginda, who is kind of Tazino-ish. I think Tez is a little bit better, but um defensive line is solid so i love tess i think ginda what sets him apart a little bit is the leadership tess is a little bit quieter of a dude and i love that be a quiet killer but i think that frank ginda is not only a legitimate talent but also like a very vocal leader and i think that is just what kind of puts him over the top you know if we're looking at stat numbers i'll take tess all day honestly but i think that's probably it but yes i love their defense like you said and I just uh, bringing back Breland. I think the offensive line is going to get better. I think they've 
I, I just like this team. I, I feel like this is the underdog team in the USFL side. Um, kind of similar to San Antonio. I think like they'll go through stretches where you're like, they're actually pretty good. Like I have San Antonio winning three out of four games at one point in the season. I have Michigan beating Houston, San Antonio, Memphis, and Arlington all in a row, which basically gets them right. to the playoffs. That's four That's games right. in a row. They're going to be four and two after six weeks. Cal's okay. going to love it. I mean, Maverick, Maverick's yeah. going to be like, he, I, I and I just I can't believe you put him at two, but someone's got to be that, and Somebody I understand to. it. I, I I understand that. Um, I think Danny Atlin becomes the guy. Honestly, I I think EJ Perry. I do too. And I think that's when they start to click. I think they're going to struggle at the beginning, and especially the, with the new offense coordinator who he brought all the stars for receivers, right? Like they brought all Devin Gray, really like Sewell. most of them. Yeah, and Jordan then, Sewell, Devin Gray, Corey Coleman retired, but yeah. yeah, he tried to get the entire core. And and I and I think Ellen will figure that out after after like three four weeks they're going to settle on Ellen, and I think they're going to be all right. I think and they might be settling on Edling now. I genuinely it, think he might be going into week one as QB1. And uh, for everybody who's watching on YouTube, if you've been following our YouTube polls, I've just put a lot of stuff up there just to, you know, I like to engage with you guys. And I've been putting all the quarterbacks for each team, and you vote on who you think QB1 is. And I would say the biggest disparity, not disparity, the biggest parity would be the Michigan Panthers. Every other team, it was pretty much like one guy got all the votes. The Panthers it was kind of spread out a little bit, like all three, four, they have four. They have uh, Lewerke, they have Etling, they have Perry, and Davis Cheek. And, Davis Cheek. and each one got votes, but like Etling got it more than you think. Like Perry got most of them, obviously, because Panthers fans love him. But I do think that Danny Etling is going to win that out, and I think week one he starts. He was even the guy that they showcased today on when they were doing their media day. I saw zero photos of EJ Perry. Which I know, media day is, is whatever. The Houston media, the Houston social media team has people thinking that Jerry Garantano is going to be our quarterback week one when I'm almost sure that he's not. Not that he's not good, but I think that he's not the QB1. So, you know, sometimes it's just a person is a little bit more outgoing, but I digress. We're moving on to the last team of the XFL, and it's your team, the DC Defenders. The team that was the biggest disappointment last season because they got to the show and they got there dominantly and then they just dropped the ball at the last second now i'm gonna put the line at a modest seven wins you know they get they get tom they get tom back they have abram smith back they have all the big pieces they got some fantastic defensive pieces you keep telling me about them these are first round draft pick guys these are guys who are legitimate nfl talent i have the line at seven why is it more and are you going to say 10? No, I'm not going to say 10. I have them at 8-2. I have them losing to Arlington, which is going to be the worst team in the league, right? And week three, right? You have them week three yeah. losing? I do. And then I have them losing at St. Louis in week eight, right? No, okay. that's home to St. Louis, right? Yeah. Yes. No, it's not. No, it's not. I don't White, know. White's, I don't, White's I don't, home I don't here. Know. White's, White's home, home here. Yeah, for the D.C. schedule. Because Houston's, Houston's in D.C., so... um. I just think this team is so deep, man. Like this, this team is so deep and like at every position, offensive line, the two losses. And he's hitting me. What did he say? Okay. All right. All right. We got him. We got him. I I think the roster is so like, I don't know where they're making the cuts. When you have two first round draft picks as your corners, you have an all XFL guy that's come back and Mike Joe, then you have the all XFL safety. And then you have, his partner Adam Sparks, and then you got defensive line guys, and the, that's just on the defensive side, right? Greg Williams, Greg Williams is going to be Greg Williams. I know that's your going to be your argument. That's your only blitz, argument blitz, with this team. Blitz, blitz, blitz. Blitz, yeah, but blitz, that's blitz. your only argument because the offensive that's line. That's why you're going to lose like, week three. That's why you're going to lose week three because they're just going to keep dropping it off to Sal Canella, and he's going to have a. But here, here's he the, here's the, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Last year they only had two pass rushers. Now they're they're bringing in. You know, Trent Harris got nine and a half sacks. Then you got Devin Bellamy. Then you got Boy. Like they're just pass rusher after pass rusher after pass rusher. Like they're 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 providing that depth. The only thing that worries me is the high turnover in the wide receiver room right now because of Lucky Jackson and Chris Blair going to the NFL. Mm-hmm. Um, 
it, like that's the only thing that worries me. But I really think they love Chris Rowland because he's a Tennessee guy, comes from the Ohio Chris Valley. I, I think they have the slot guys. I think uh, Brandon Smith from Iowa is going to be one of those guys to watch. And they've got the quarterback, man. They've got the quarterback. I, I know uh, you've never been a fan of him. Yeah, I, but I, I think he's perfect for the system. That's the thing. Like, and guess what? We got this boy. You got a helmet back there from BU, right? We got this running back. That I love him. You know, I love Abram him. Smith. Abram Smith. And then, then you, then you have another running back, Darius Higgins, who played. For... Darius Higgins played, played Reggie Barlow, Barlow in college, college at Virginia State, State. and, and uh, he, like he, he knows, knows the system. system. So, so having, having a backup, backup running back, back maybe taking some uh, uh, carries off of. Abram Smith, so he's fresh later on in the year. Like, like I, I just feel like this team is built to win the championship. And like I said, the only room that scares me is the wide receiver room just because there's so many um, transactions that are happening right now. Yeah. And they're dropping guys. They're picking new guys up. I get that. What did okay. you set for? I forget. It was seven. My bar was seven. I, I, I had over. All right. And you had it over. Okay. So there's only one team left. Hit me. Houston Roughnecks. Hell yeah. CJ's boys, Ace's boys. Um come back. They got a reloaded defense, right? Like they did so well. Defense is only getting better somehow, which is wild to me. Offensive player of the year, Mark Thompson. Yes, sir. Uh quarterback room a question mark. Wide receivers, my boy Henny. You know, I love Isaiah Henny. Justin Hall is probably my favorite wide receiver that did not play for the Pittsburgh Maulers in the USFL last year. Um I'm gonna set the bar at Four. Oh, oh, that's disrespectful. Oh my, I thought I had it a little low and I was like, this is going to sound disrespectful, but you're even more. I think it's a five and I think we could still, I think that that's, that's a seat, not a ceiling, a floor. I think that is a floor for the team. I think that if we have, you know, below average quarterback play that yes, five wins would be where we'd be at because I think our defense will be good enough to not only keep us in games, but possibly win. But I think that five is, is a reasonable thing to say. And let me get there. Okay. So I think we might lose the first two weeks. I think the showboats are going to be real hard week one. I, like I said earlier, I think the showboats and the DC defenders and the St. Louis battle Hawks, those are the three teams you don't want to play in the first two, three games, because I think they're going to be the most ready. So we play two of those in the first two weeks. I think we have the worst opening two games. I straight up. If we win one of those games, I will feel great because those are two hard teams. We have the Showboats and the DC Defenders. I'm going to be conservative, and I want to say we lose them both. Then I think we win two in a row. We beat the Panthers. We beat the Renegades. Um, Yeah, especially the Renegades, you know, I think getting them earlier in the season when we're still getting it together we're still putting coal into the fire i think that would be a difficult game but we're at home so i'm hoping that you know from what i'm seeing online all this stuff i think that the rig might be pretty full i think it might be loud and i think the home field advantage might help so i'm liking that i like that then we go into week five i think we lose to the stallions and then i think we lose to the st louis battle hawks we are just taking the best teams and we're putting them back to back i don't know why we did this with our schedule i don't know who was in charge of this but i want to fight them because they're like hey we're going to give you two weeks off and then we're going to put you two weeks on the hardest thing you've ever done you know it's kind of like working on an oil rig it's like hey you're going to work two of the hardest months of your life and then you're going to get six months off and then you're going to work two of the hardest months of your life so it kind of feels like that i think we beat the uh, brahmas i think we go 2 and 0 in the texas bowls which is nice you know Uh, It's a little annoying that we play them both at home. It's good for the team because hopefully we'll win both the way that I have we us winning them. But I have to drive all the way to Houston for both those games. I don't get to go watch the Brahmas take on the Roughnecks in San Antonio or Arlington. That's whatever. Then I have us losing to the Stallions again. I think they're just such a good team. And then I have us winning out and hopefully... You know, week 10, that's the game of the year, like you said, and it puts us into the playoffs. I'm hoping that we win one more game than I have us here and we go into the playoffs. But I want to know, why do you think that we're going to be four and six? It's brutal. Well, I, I like I, looking at it. I we're actually kind of the I have them winning week one. Okay. I have them losing. In, I have them losing the next three. Whoa. I And then I have them beating Birmingham. And then I have them beating St. Louis. 
I think they they are yeah. they could be yeah, a, going to the chip. Straight and then up. I have them losing to San Antonio, and then I have them losing to Birmingham because I think they get San Antonio on the wrong side. I think San Antonio is going to be a better team in the second half of the year, mm-hmm. and I think they beat you. And then I have them winning, and with a must win in Week Ten, the Flippo is able to knock you guys out, which sends the Panthers to the playoffs at five and five. The if Panthers. you win that game, I did the tiebreakers and everything. If you win that game, you're in. With you losing that game, the Panthers are in the playoffs. Wow, you went yeah. much deeper. I, I get it, and I appreciate the depth at which you go to this. Uh, but dang, okay. I could see both happening. I could see us winning seven games. You know, there's so many question marks on this team that it's sort of infuriating as a fan and somebody who covers the team and analyzes every position down to the people who aren't even going to play. And it's a very infuriating team to cover because we could be one of the, we could be the second best team in the USFL conference. We could also be the worst team in the USFL conference. And there's just not that much difference between those two things happening. And it's horrifying. A lot of it rests on the fact that if Reed Sinnott comes in and, and is the guy who I believe he can be, we should be the second best team in the USFL easily. I just think the Stallions are too good. I think we could beat them, like you said, uh, it, one of the times, but they're just that good. So, that's so I, I, I was keeping track of what you said and what I said. Your playoff teams would be Birmingham, Memphis, D.C., and St. Louis. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Houston's not in the playoffs for you. Mm-hmm. My playoffs are Birmingham, Michigan, D.C., and St. Louis. So we're we're disagreeing really on the fourth team, and yeah. we we kind of bo- you put took a bunch the showboats out and you put the Panthers in. Panthers in, yeah. And I don't think that's that crazy, um, man. It's really just going to be the Roughnecks. I need to see quarterback play. I have gone through two seasons. I watched Clayton Thorson. I watched Kenji Bahar. Man, I need good quarterback play until I'm legitimately going to believe I don't want to get my hopes up and get hurt again. Cause I have been hurt by this team. I love this team so much. I put way too much time into this team and I don't want to get my hopes up that hard until I see a quarterback come out and play legit. And I believe it can happen, but I just, I have to see it is my thing. You know, it's one of those things where I have to see it to believe it. And it sucks, but I do. I'm not going to say that on my show. I'll say that on this show. I'm not going to say it on my show. <laughs> I'll say it on this show. There you go. All right. So we'll figure out a way to put a poll on that. Uh, and then we're going to put it in the description. Uh, everybody who checks out the description of the show, it's going to have links to the polls, links to all of our socials, and it's going to have time markers. So if you only want to see us talk about the jerseys, you can skip to that, all that good stuff. I'm trying to make it look a little bit more professional, you know, all that good stuff. So yes, our polls right there. We will put them up on at polar ops, UFM on Twitter. And we will also put them up on our YouTube, which is a very fun time. And if you follow us, you'll see all these cool graphics and stuff. It's a good time. All right. But KB, what are we talking about with our second topic? Uh, Second topic. We did get some uh, previews today uh, via social media. But let's talk about uh, let's talk about uniforms. Heck yeah, man. All right. Let's talk about do we like or do we not like? the revamped USFL uniforms for specifically the three USFL teams that stayed. The gamblers technically stayed, but they're just taking over the Roughnecks uniforms. I have confirmed through the team and stuff that it's just going to be the same uniform. Nothing has changed. So the three teams that are changing a little bit to uh, more than a little bit are the Showboats, the Panthers, and the Stallions. Webb, what did you think? I like the showboats blue and blue. I really do. I, I think it's. I think it's distinct. I think it's. I think it gives them their their color. Like so, every team, if you think about it, really kind of has an individual color. We talked about in the USFL where like it was a lot of red. Remember, like the first year is like the stars, even oh, though they had the orange and yellow. Every oh, every team had red except the breakers, right? Yeah. And I I think like. Birmingham kind of has that gold color kind of rolling through in the red, but I, I love the showboats. Like just looking at that, I love the showboats. I know you hate the yeah. different color on the shoulder pads and everything, but like I, I absolutely love the all whites and then the all blues. I, I think that gives the showboats a distinct look instead of just looking like a, a NFL, a Madden creative, creative, you know, a generic creative team. Uh, There's the I, blue I just, on blue. Yeah, I, I just like it. I. It, 
makes the yellow stand out a little bit more. Uh, Memphis, I mean Michigan. Wait, wait, wait. Let's 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 go team by team. That's easier, right? right? We're we're on yeah, it, yeah. and it's easier on yeah. Kenny. I, I I just realized it's much easier on Kenny yeah. if we do yeah. team by team. Um, I agree. You know, I hate two tones. I don't like. It. I hate it about the roughnecks that we have shoulder pads that are a different color than the rest of the jersey. But then once they went and they changed the pants, so it's white on white and it's blue on blue. You're right, man. It just makes it look better. It's a better contrast. It looks cleaner. It looks like it was a more complete thought in my mind. Uh, so yeah, I, I gotta say, when I saw the video, I don't remember who it was. He has a fro and he was getting everybody hyped up and he's sitting there and standing there with the uh, all blues. Man, it, it kind of looks sick. I was like, wow, that's actually really cool. But it's not my favorite. It's not my favorite of the three. Uh, we move to the next one. I'll go into it. Just hit my desk, my bad. Uh, I'll go into it. The Michigan Panthers. The Michigan Panthers are the most exciting to me because I think they're going to use different combinations this year. And I like the fact that they actually showed that during media day. So they have the white on the plums. They have plum on champagne and they have plum on plum. So the away uniform, I believe it's just going to look like this. You know, it's just going to be white on the pants. They also redid the stripe on the side of the pants. And I think that looks slick. You know, it got a little more blue in there. And I really do like the uh, light blue. I think it's underutilized, especially in like their graphics and stuff. I think it's their best color, which is sad. It's their their tertiary tertiary color, you know, yeah. tertiary. But then you look at Danny Yetling here, which this is the post that made me think, mm, I think he might be in the lead. Because I already had that inkling, that Etling uh, of a thought where I was like, oh, I think he might be QB1. And then they posted this and I was like, well, yeah, yeah I might be right. But then the Frank Ginda here, man, Kenny's kind of killing it on this. I think that that is the slickest look. It's the plum on plum. They have the new stripes on the pants. You know, I think it just looks really cool. I think that's my favorite is the plum on plum. It just looks like a more complete thought. The way that the showboats did, but you know what? This doesn't have web two tone shoulder pads. <laughs> that's really yeah, the but- difference for me. So the two tone shoulder pads, but when you ha- when your pants are the same color, and I think you said that just a moment ago, it it doesn't stand out as much. When they had white, it was three colors, right? Like in in the whole uniform, the whole one color, and then two that it doesn't stand out as bad. Not like your roughnecks who are going to look a little different unless they change it. Um, yeah. But you're saying they're not. Uh, I I wish they used blue a little bit more. I did too. The champ the champagne is yeah. The plum is great. the The plum is a completely different. Royal plum. color, royal plum, royal plum, whatever, yeah. whatever. <laughs> um, it, it's basically the only team I could think of in professional sports that uses that color. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, as a primary color, especially. Um, I I just I love the color. It's always been one of the favorites. Um, the yeah. plum on plum is a lot of plum, but I like it. it. I, if they're not going to use it every week and it's a special occasion kind of thing, like a color like rush that, deal, yeah, that that's cool. Um, but yeah, it was all right. I I okay. still like Memphis better. But tell me, what if they did the color rush light blue on light blues? How wild would that? Oh, be? Uh, it, 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 that would be wild. But they That'd they, they got to they got to show that they're not going to just use uh, the light blues for fun. Yeah, like, it's just like an accent color. I don't know. I think the plum on plum just looks sharp enough that it's a dark enough red that it's it's not almost annoying, you know, like when the Chiefs go red on red, you're like, mm, that's yeah. a lot. But it's it's a little darker, so it's a little harsh on the eyes. It looks a little better on the TV. And I think that the new way that they do the stripes on the pants is enough contrast for me that it just from a side profile, I think it is a beautiful jersey. I, I just do. I think it's good. I think they are probably my favorite in the league right now. Well, no, I love the Brahmas. I will forever love the Brahmas. Uh, they use the yellow for the aways. They use the gray, like ash gray on ash gray for the homes. I love that. But I digress again. My father's a lawyer, so I say that. Uh, the last team is the Birmingham Stallions. And this is the team that I think has the least amount of new. I don't know. They just, yeah. it's a little brighter red. What, what do you think, Webb? Well, I actually, to tell you the truth, when we you started going through team by team, I only want to talk about the showboats. I would talk about the Panthers. 
I really don't know what's going on here. Like, I, I just don't, like... It's almost annoying. Know, it, yeah, and then, <laughs> then I heard people are wearing the wrong numbers and all that. Like, I was just like... Dude, Scooby I don't know, in the man. 36, and he was yeah. not happy. He yeah, I, I just... It. So I didn't really pay attention enough. The stallions are... It doesn't. It seems like the red is brighter. Like you said, it's almost like it a DC. It's closer to a DC than like the maroon that it used to be. It used to be red and khaki. Remember? Um, but yeah. I, I thought I thought they were going to go with a little bit more of the Vegas gold or the Birmingham gold. Um, but it 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 kind of has a nice throwback feel to the like the eighties with the stripes on the shoulder pads. But it is what it is. It's, it's the Stallions uniform. It's it's black. always been middle of the pack or the bottom. That's it's it. bottom. It's so bottom, dude. This look at the stripes. I do not know why Matt Corral is going for the Aaron Rodgers open sleeve look. It's not cool. It's so ugly. And it makes the stripes look even worse. Like everything on this talk Madden create a team, dude. The numbers blocky. Like it almost looks like they took little accents off the numbers from last season. The stripes boring the pants just a red stripe like they took a uniform that was already fairly boring and they somehow made it more boring web and it blows my mind the only thing i can think of is maybe the helmet like the the stallions a little bigger like it looks like the stallions bigger on the side of the helmet which is a cool thing sure but gosh they're boring uniforms man i'm so glad that they did not like so you saw a lot of the new coaches wear and it has a lot of the third logo right oh yeah. it it has the b i am so glad they did not use the b because the that helmet, b, be uh, like, yeah the, the, that b that b just looked bland for me and it's the same thing with michigan m like i, I just I don't, I don't i'm not a big fan i don't hate them i like the way that michigan uses them on the shoulder pads i yeah. dude if the birmingham stallions use the b on the shoulder pads that would have upped it a little bit more for me and, and i wouldn't hate it as much I do agree. The stallion logo on the helmet, that's that's their best bet. It shows movement. It moves well from front back to front. Yeah, that's the best one. But and it's let's and say, it's their brand. Yeah. It, it's literally oh, okay. Yeah. So the the stallion is like legitimately a good amount bigger. Like it's it's taking up a lot of helmet space. Uh that's wild. I actually like that. I think that's a cool look. That's a little more modernization to what they made look at those uniforms dude they literally changed nothing like it's crazy they just made the logo a little bit bigger on the helmet oh my gosh look at that i think if, they actually changed the numbers so it doesn't even have outlines like but if, if if the feel is better for the pro i mean for the players and that that was the biggest complaint from the playoffs i mean from last year the usfl was that the uniform didn't fit right. And all the players, I remember interviewing a few of the former oh, ballers. Yeah. They and they're like, if we merge, as can we get the Under Armour uh, uniform? So I'm just glad they went there. And yeah, no, I, I in, in, the, in the grand scheme of things, I still think the same four teams are going to make the playoffs regardless of what refresh uniform they have. So. Okay, so this is, this is going to be our poll now. Rank them. You have Showboats, Panthers, Stallions, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to do Panthers, Showboat, Stallions. There you go. There are rankings. So now we move on. KB, this is your time to shine. Now, if you think KB sounds a little bit different this week, it's because she is still in Florida with my wonderful sister-in-law and brother-in-law with their still very, very fresh baby. Uh, So she's out on a patio right now because she respects that grind and she just wanted to make sure that she was on the show. So KB, hit us with the blind side. All right, Ace, correct me if I'm wrong. Mm. I think we are, according to my calculations, we are 23 days from kickoff. Uh, if this drops, so it's Wednesday. Oh, so Friday, I didn't think about that. 22, because today is 24. So okay. tomorrow, 23, and then the day that it comes out will be 22. Yes. Okay, we're 22 days from kickoff. 22 days. All right, so what I want to know, and this is a total audible from the captain because oh. I've been in Florida being a grandma and have been completely disengaged over the last two weeks. <laughs> um, so I'm very thankful to him for his help. But 
um, he has pointed out to me that as far as the Michigan Panthers go, there are still no single game tickets available for sale for the Panthers. And the first three games of the season for them are supposed to be home games. So it, I, I mean, is that a concern? Like, what do we think about that? Oof. Well, what do you think? Kenny, can you bring up the Panthers schedule? I know this is kind of unplanned. No one's prepared for the blind yeah, side. Yeah, I just, I just pulled that up myself. I didn't even know that their first three were. I apologize. Uh, yeah, you, no, they're, they're, I, I did, I did confirm their first three games on the schedule are at home. Dang, dude. Oh man. Um, the fact that the fact that the first three games, it scares me a little bit. It's not even like they have that extra week of like, they're legitimately three weeks, six weeks away from being more than halfway done with their home schedule. Like put it that way. There's six weeks and they are done with their half, their home schedule. Basically um, this, this is concerning, but there's gotta be a solid reason. And we don't know what's going behind closed doors with uh Ford field. Um, are they still trying to secure some dates there? Like we do know what the XFL kind of ran into last year with Vegas. Did they count their chickens before the hatch? Really? Um, so is, is that part of it? And maybe for Ford is being used somewhere else. I, I'm not hundred percent sure what's going on here, but Maybe maybe they're trying to get more season tickets first, you know, trying to make it a sweeter deal or I'm not I'm not. Hmm. It, yes, this is a problem. I if did was, I did is, I did look I did look at the uh UFL website today and the only uh tickets that you cannot buy uh single game seats for are uh the Panthers. That's at bad. Ford Field. Hmm. Um. Wow. So yeah, no, that's definitely scary. I think so. Here, here's the only thing for me is that I think the people who are going to go to these games are going to go to these games either way because, like. It's not the NFL where people are planning out way, way in advance because the tickets are going to be in high demand. And, you know, if you're rooting for a team who's really good, the tickets could be expensive. Uh, I think that even if they release them a week from now, they're still going to sell about the same amount that they would sell, honestly. So I hope that they're getting that fixed because I don't even know what the reason would be. Why would they not be selling single game tickets? Well, it kind of shows them here, I guess. But those are season tickets. Those are season tickets. $300. Whoa. Honestly, though, if you look at that, that's a lot of tickets that are sold. I'm telling you, if you go to the UFL website, you cannot cannot purchase single-game tickets for the Panthers. Wow, you literally can't. It's not even an option. You can season tickets, premium, exactly. premium seating, group exactly. experience, and account manager. Right. Well, I guess get a group together, guys. Uh, everybody get a group together. Go to the games. Um, no, that's definitely, to answer your question, it is concerning. Do I think it's going to affect attendance that much? I don't. I really don't because it's spring football, and the people who are going to go have already decided that they're going to go uh, no matter when the tickets come out. But it's definitely concerning. So that's my answer. Web concerning, yes. Oh yeah, definitely. I, I'm just trying to see. Uh, can you pull up that schedule again, please? The last two games that they have, yeah, oh, they don't have the dates on there. Um, I was just trying to see if the the Tigers were in town, if they're trying to run a promotion with the Tigers. Um, but it, they are in town one of the days, but not all three. So I, I'm not 100 percent sure. I don't know why they wouldn't be selling them. I did the the only thing I could see is, but why would they be selling season tickets if they didn't have Ford Field? True. Like, why would but, they not already be but, selling? Yeah, they can't sell season tickets if you don't even know what stadium you're going to be in for every game. So, 
Um, I'm not 100 percent sure why they would do this. There's got to there's got to be some kind of reason. Um, well, there has to be. Yeah. Then they already had their fan event, so it's not that St. Louis is waiting for their fan event. Um, it, because the time slots are already out there, like there there's no reason for it. And so yeah, I, this would be a concern, especially if I'm a Panthers fan. Um, that hopefully you'll be able to see your team in your market all five games. I agree. That, that that that's what that's what I'm trying to that that's what I think the biggest concern would be because maybe week three they've got a Drake concert coming to town or some <laughs> like like some some yeah. Taylor, Taylor Swift, Swift. You know what I mean? Yeah. Remember last year they were on the road for a long time because Taylor Swift is there. Um and she was in Detroit that week and they couldn't Place they had like tomorrow. what four yeah, they had like four weeks in a row where like the four field was being used for something else. So, but they would have to already have that worked out. So, I don't know. It's maybe, a weird maybe thing. you have blindsided me with this one. This I'm one, very blindsided. I don't have an no, answer. Normally, I normally I have at least <laughs> some kind of me. answer. It's normally, I'm me. like, I think it's because it's of the this. Captain. I don't know. Yeah. Genuinely, it's don't the know the captain. Like, yeah. I didn't it, even know until you it, said it. Yeah. It's the captain. I'm not super plugged in with Panthers Twitter. Um, well, so I don't know. <laughs> it's crazy. I think he, I think he may be, which is not all of us he, are in the shadow. Right. Right. I think that's, I step out of the shadow because I'm above it, but yeah. right. Uh, dang, you did blindside us. That's crazy. Uh, that's don't the first kiddies. blindside I've ever got where I'm, I'm like, I don't, uh, yeah, they're still pushing season tickets. So that's the first blindside I've ever been like, I don't know. I genuinely don't have an answer. Yes. It's concerning. Like that's yeah, well, I'm... well, if you go back to the season tickets, you said there's limited season tickets left, right? Yeah, no, they maybe, sold a lot. So maybe they're trying to get to that that season ticket for the lower bowl kind of thing, and then open up the season tickets. Like because if you only have seven ooh, tickets ooh, in that in that okay. top in that top section, right, that purple section, I think it was. Maybe they're trying to sell those seven so uh, individual that will be a season ticket holder section. Like I'm picking up what you're putting down, right? So maybe and instead of everyone that, fighting for that yeah. seven seats, but like that, that would be different than they've handled tickets at any other venue. Yes, I I think I'm I'm picking up what Webb's putting down. It's that they're selling more season tickets than they expected, and they're like, okay, let's see if we can sell out of season tickets, and then open up the single game tickets, uh, because one, it kind of ensures more people will be there because they bought the season tickets. And then two, it just looks better to be able to say you sold that many. Um, yeah, maybe that. That's all I got. I, I don't have anything else. Um, I'm stumped. Stumped, I tell you. Uh, so this this week at Blindside, the captain and KB won. So they did typically win it. they lose. They won it. They won it. Typically they, they lose kind of like the Arlington Renegades, two and eight. Oh, like the Michigan Panthers today. <laughs> oh. No, no, the the captain won. The, this was this was all on him. I've been I've been busy, you, busy be, I've been busy being a grandma, so it's all on him. It's to his credit. All right. Well, with that, um, we will post two polls once I figure out how we're going to post them. And yeah, I guess. It's all about this right now. We'll see you all next week.